couple of you that didn't sit on the back row. I'm going to move those uh, sofas to the front. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Sit way in front on a sofa. We're going to sing joyful, joyful. I'm hanging. Does anyone else have allergies that are just making you croak? Aren't they bad? Okay, one more time. Thank you, Bill. about now? <laughs> now it's just real loud. You gotta remember what I said about coming to the chapel, right? No matter how much we practice or what we do, it still comes out like this. Bill and I spent spent five minutes. To, I'm on Daryl's, Melanie. We spent five minutes a while ago working on the computer program that worked all morning to watch it not work. It's amazing. Okay, announcements this morning real quick. A um, couple of things. <clears throat> Melanie, the Thursday Bible study is done till January. Okay, you guys will see that in the middle of your bulletin. That Thursday Bible study is done till January. Uh, the Wednesday night group is still meeting. We'll be meeting every week, probably except for the week of Christmas. If you guys would like to come and see, we're uh, studying Revelation. It's been a great study. Really interesting stuff coming out of that. Great questions. You guys, please come and be involved in that. Are we going to have a potluck? Christmas? I don't think so. No. We don't know yet. And, Daryl's uh, not here. The one who tells us what to do. That's right. That guy. I remember him. Okay. So we'll have a Wednesday night Bible study. We'll see about the rest of that. And, uh, you know, I, I try mm. to catch birthdays on here whenever I can. I try to pick one that's close and we don't always get to. But we have the old thing. What? 
It's her birthday today, tomorrow, <laughs> yesterday, day before. It's already party for two days. <laughs> Kathy's been here for a long time. Uh, been involved with the ministry for a long time. Her family's involved with the ministry for a long time. So happy birthday, Kathy. Happy birthday. And if I ever miss a birthday, please let me know. If it's not on here, please let me know. I've got a question. Who did not shower this morning? Why is everybody way back there? It's you. It's me? I was sitting back there, though. I don't know. Oh, boy. You guys know the warning, right? Next week you're going to come, there's going to be like 10 chairs just right here. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. We'll put names on them. Mike Curran, Bill. We'll let you guys know. Okay. Prayer requests. Get serious here for a minute. A um, couple of things. There's a Jolene Connors on here that we have been praying for for a little bit. This is a very dear friend of Bill and Sue's. And uh, Bill informed me that she passed away Wednesday. So we want to be praying for that family. Their loss for Bill. Bill uh, Bill shared with me that he's probably known her almost longer than anybody else he's known. So they're very dear friends to them. We want to be praying for them. We have little Henley on here, which has been recovering from a kidney transplant. We need to put Aliana back on. Aliana just got scheduled. She's going to have her next open heart surgery next month. That means that she's healthy enough to have it, which is a which is a blessing. But this will be her third, and she may need one more after this. But uh, as you guys have, any of you guys have followed on my Facebook, she's a, she's a miracle. She really is. She'll be uh, two years old. This will be her third open heart surgery, and uh, is doing very very well. Um, I want to be praying for Kathy White, Bob White, her husband's on here. Kathy's part of my morning service over at the front side, and uh, this morning she talked about the testimony of faith, what it is to persevere in faith, which we're going to talk about today, and uh, about her husband and what she's been through in the last few years and how faith is what's gotten her through it. And all that she's been through, every time I ever ask her how things are going, she'll give me an update, she'll give me the medical report, and then she'll say, God's always there. Amazing testimony. I want to be praying for uh, Donnie and I, as we did last week, with uh, throat cancer. I want to be praying for Nubbin. How is Nubbin doing? He called. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie's having a hard time. He's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anything's changed, though. We'll be praying for Nubbin. And for those of you who... Uh, we're here last year. Tomorrow is one year that my mom was given 30 days to live. Wow, that's so awesome. It's been a wonderful year. It's been mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't know those of you who I shared this with, but one year ago tomorrow, I sat with my mom in Rosa when she told me she wasn't going to do dialysis, and uh, she wanted me to prepare the family. And I asked her, I said, Mom, what's going to happen? She said, the doctor says I'm going to die. I said, okay, and we talked about that. And I said, Mom, how do you feel about that? And her answer was, she said, Mijo, that doctor is not God. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. And absolutely. She was absolutely right. So Amen. You guys, thank you for all that. Let's pray this, let's pray this morning. Father, we ask that you be here this morning. We ask that your Holy Spirit fill this room. And we ask that you give Daryl a refreshing time where he is and get him back safely. For all of our family that's traveling and abroad, we uh, keep him in mind, Father. We keep him on our hearts. We cast our cares to you. This morning, Father, we ask that you be here, that your word flow through us, that it be part of us, and that we walk your faith out loud. We want to thank you for all of our track family. We want to pray for the Connors family, Bill and Sue, who have lost a dear friend. May their mourning be swift, Father. May they feel your touch in all that happens. We want to pray for little Hanley and little, little Aliana. Thank you for the, the blessings they have been, Father, for seeing their lives continue and grow healthy and strong for your purpose. We want to lift up Bob White and Kathy, his wife, to you. They're continually singing your praises, Father, through all the struggles that they go through. They never take their eyes off of you like Peter standing on the water. We want to pray for the Knight family and for the Crouch and for all of our racetrack family here and abroad. For those that are loved ones that are at war, this holiday season is tough on them. May they always be in our mind and what they're doing for our freedom to be here this morning. And Father, we simply ask your blessing today for this service. May we hear your voice, may we know your touch, and may we feel your warmth. And Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing, O oh, Come All Ye Faithful.
show yourself to us. We remember that the Advent was a time when people were still longing for the Christ, the Christ child. They did not know how he was going to come, even though it was foretold. They did not know that you were the King of kings, the Lord of lords, even though it was foretold. Father, open our hearts and minds that we can see the signs of the coming of you your second appearing and when you take us all to heaven, Lord. Don't uh, let us miss you like so many people have missed you. We long for your coming to Jesus, our Emmanuel. As Melanie said, we're in Advent, which is the celebration of the coming of Christ between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we're going to light a couple of candles here. These purple candles all speak to the prophecy of Christ. And since it's Christmas season, we usually go to and hear sermons about the Christmas story. Today we're going to go a little bit different. <coughs> and the reason is, is there's some prophecies which Melanie was just talking about that are a little more relevant to us in our current day. <coughs> and this comes out of Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I've shared with a group in, in Bible study that uh, Revelation was the last book I ever read or studied in the Bible. Since then, I've been through it more than once. I've done several studies on it. I took a college level class on Revelation. The reason I took Revelation last is because the middle part of that, we talked about the hour of trial. And however I, wherever I received that growing up, um, movies, whatever, my perception of that was horrible, terrifying fire and brimstone, a God that hates us. And for at least half of my life, that's who I thought God was. But to listen to what that verse says, because you have kept my command to persevere. Nowhere in any translation or the original language does it say, because you have been perfect in this world. It says, persevere. It says, well, you've kept making the effort to be like my son. It says, although he knows we fall short of his glory, he still loves us. What he says here is persevere, to keep trying to keep contending for the faith. In this scripture here, in the original language, I spent a whole lot of time studying the language for the Bible study in this, is it's a, it's a military language. It's saying to be on guard, to be like a sentry in the military guarding the faith, guarding your own faith. My misconception growing up and for the longest time of this was that I wasn't good enough and God was going to hate me. Not what it really says, which is God loves me so much that 